Hi, I'd like to show you some strategies on making matching bowls. Now, matching so they stack well, matching so they become a set. Now, the very first thing you can do to simplify getting them all the same size is simply weighing it. So, I've got a two pound ball here and I've got a stack of two pound balls here. So, first of all, you have to decide what bowl you want to make, whether it's going to be wide or tall or salad or dessert. You know, that's up to you. So, start by just making a simple, simple bowl. So, I'm going to start by getting a ball of clay, centering it the same way, sealing the bottom. And away we go. Now, when you're making bowls, you make them from the inside out. You don't trim the inside. You always trim the outside. And if you have a shape in mind, make that shape on the inside and the outside will match. Also, think about the base. When you're throwing, that base should be the same size if it's for children, you might want to have a or cat bowl, for example. You may want a really wide base so it doesn't tip over. If it's purely decorative, you may want a very narrow base. So I'm going to go an average size base. Now another strategy for making the bowls the same size, you can use these rings on the wheel and throw that hump of clay so it goes right out to that ring that you're interested in. So I'm going to go out right to that one. Now you'll find the more you do in a row, sit down, get the balls of clay, start throwing, they'll start to come out the same. When you're throwing a bowl, always start it with the curve. Get that curve going. Compress. Decide how much clay you want to trim a foot off of. I have probably a little less than half an inch there. Well, the next thing you want to do is do the same movements over and over again. So if you do two pulls, do two pulls on every single bowl. If you go up first, go up first on each and every bowl. So you get this rhythm going. That's how you get them to match. Push in. Up. Relax. Now it's pretty narrow right now. I want to make it wider. I'm leaving the lip a little bit thick so that way when I spread it out, it'll thin out. So now I'm going to spread it out. Concentrate on getting that inside shape the way you want it. You want it to be really a smooth, continuous curve. You can work on that for a while. Remember, I'm not too concerned about the outside. I want that inside to be perfect. Give myself a little more time tighten up the bowl, make it easier to take off, I'm going to scrape that slip off the outside. Also refines the shape a little bit. Now I'm going to take the rib and refine the inside. When you're using a rib on a bowl, you hold it on the edge and it actually moves a little bit. 
if there's an, any imperfection, like a shock absorber. Put it at an angle and hold it. If you have a little problem, hold it to that problem for a little while, let it smooth it out, then move gradually, very slowly to the center. Take the rib and go all the way to the center. Don't go past the center because it'll dig in. And I'll often put a little mark of the potter in there. Take your finger, put it in the center, and move it out faster than the wheel's moving. And it'll put a nice little spiral in there. Okay. I'm going to chamois the lip. A strategy for making bowls that are the same, keep them simple. If you have a very complex shape, it's hard to repeat unless you have a template. So keep the shape simple. Okay, I'm going to try to repeat this bowl. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to show you a couple things. Number one, you want that diameter. Use calipers. So you measure that outside diameter. So the next bowl, I just use these and I come and I go, okay, that's the right size. The second thing you can do is to use a gauge. Now I have a gauge here that I made and this goes up and down and the stick is a barbecue skewer and it can go in and out. You set this up on the wheel and bring it up to the height you want and that way I can get them all exactly the same size. Now a potter's trick is if you don't have one of these or don't care to make one is to take a piece of clay, put it on the side of your wheel. And get one of those bamboo skewers that are used for shish kebabs. Poke it through there. and set it up exactly the same way that I set my gauge up. So that way, I'll know that's exactly the size I want. I'm going to put it just almost straight on. There. The advantage of using the gauge is you can, you know, stop, come back, and try it again. This, you have to do it all in one sitting. Measure. You can use a ruler. So this bowl is three and a half by seven inches. Write it down. Now make another. Now, if you have bats, bats work really well. If you don't have bats, you don't need bats. Just take your metal rib, put the rib under one side. Now, this picking pots off the wheel like this is taking advantage of the clay's memory. I made the bowl round. It wants to be round. I've cleaned all the slip off and I've compressed it, so it wants to be round. So as long as I don't disturb it too much, shake it up or really distort it, it'll go back to being round. So I can't get my fingers under it, but I can get this thin rib under it, and I'll put, put the rib under it, get my left fingers underneath, 
wet my right fingers just a little bit so then they'll slide to the other side. One movement, slide to the other side, pick it up, and then put it down the same way you picked it up. Okay, let's throw another one. Try to match it. So I've got my calipers, I've got my gauge. I could even measure. It's nice having that stick as a visual reference. You can really see how far up you have to go and how far out you have to go. Because remember when you go to trim, you've got to make sure that the foot's the same size too, so you'll measure that. That's a little easier because it's leather hard at that point. Lift. Keep that rim straight. I pulled it up twice, almost there. Because I'm going to rib it, I'm going to leave that. Now, pay attention to how thick the rim is. You want to match the rims, too. Clean off the slip. I'm just repeating each and every step I made the first time. And rib, paying real attention to make sure that inside contour matches. And it's a smooth, continuous curve in there. So say if you had a marble, it would just roll back and forth. It wouldn't hit any bumps on the way. A little groove there, so I'm going to hold the rib there for a minute. And then into the center. Go out just a second. If you're going to slide the pot off, you don't need to do this. But if you're going to pick the pot up, you don't want to draw water underneath it. So, so let me show you that again. Run the wire underneath. board ready. Get your rib. Slide it underneath. Get your left fingers underneath. Wet your right hand a little bit. Throw a little water underneath. Ding up the rim and bring it around. Pick it up and put it back down. So you'll find the more of these you do, the better they get. I'm going to do another now. This one bowls out a little bit more on the top. So do another. And what you'll find is, after the glaze firing, I mean after the bisque firing, you'll have all these bowls and you can match them up into sets of four. So match them by diameter, match them by height, match them by feet. When I do dinner sets, I always make a third more than I have the order for. So. If someone wants a set of six, I make nine. That way I can match an exact set. So my personal cupboard is full of all these oddball plates and bowls and cups from other people's sets. That didn't quite match perfectly. you also find if you don't talk, if you just kind of get into the rhythm one after another, they'll start coming out exactly the same way. Lift. Remember on bowls, 
they're cylinders. You, cylinders with a round inside bottom. So you always start with a the cylinder, then you stretch it out. This time I'm going a little bit higher because last time when I stretched it out, it became a little low and I had to come back and fix that. Okay, I'm gonna bring it out. It packs the clay in a little bit, makes it easier to take off. Keeps it round too. If you have too much water, it tends to warp a lot more. I'm gonna use the rib and come in. And this time, kind of like the one that's more rounded, so I'm going to do that. Going all the way down. So, be aware of the shrinkage. down and you can use your fingers as a gauge go down to your knuckle or you can even check it by poking it putting your finger down to the wheel head and checking to make sure you have the exact same amount of clay down there each time after a while like I said you get into a rhythm and they start coming out the same way open Lift my finger a little bit so it has a curve there. Now, it does help to have the same number of pulls, too. You know, you get a point of diminishing returns when the, you pull. Twice, you get a certain height. The third time, it's not that much higher. Fourth and fifth, doesn't, nothing happens. So beware of that. Try to do the same number of pulls. I did two, and this one's a little bit higher than the last one. I bring it out. That looks like it's just about right. Make that bottom a little bit wider. It's a good idea to keep looking at it. Look at the one that you just that just came off the wheel that you've made, and then look at the one you're making go okay that's a little bit wider at the bottom so I need to go out just a little bit more I want the lips to match too and remember you know people like really thin lips but they crack and they break easier bring that out just a little bit up just a little bit so a little thicker lip will guarantee that your pot lives longer and it's a little bit stronger and people will love it a little bit longer. Run the wire underneath. just did something a little bit different. I turned on the wheel as I was running the wire through. And that actually is a good thing, particularly on cylindrical forms, because it helps keep it from warping. Board ready. So that's the way you make matching bowls. And you can make matching objects using this technique. Just you know, a little more measuring than you're used to, but this is a really nice way of making sets, and sets are beautiful and wonderful to use and function really well. So thank you.